From time to time, I like to use drumming games with my students. And this is usually at the end of the season or maybe right before Christmas or if I can tell my student has had a bad day, maybe they failed a test or someone stole their iPod or you can just tell they're having a rough day. Now one of my personal faves is something I call the Ernie and Bert game. Okay, now this is something that I kind of came up with, but I didn't invent because for anybody who's ever seen Sesame Street before, you know who Ernie and Bert are. And you can probably watch it on YouTube now, but there's this concept that Ernie and Bert, and yes, I mean the puppets, were doing, because as you guys know, Ernie was a drummer, right? And there's this really cool video of them where Bert's reading a book, Ernie wants to play his drums, and of course, Bert's not happy about this. So Ernie says, hey, let's play a game, Bert. And he says, he says I'm gonna play something, and you're gonna sing back what I played. So for example, Ernie goes, plays that on the drums, and then Bert goes boom, boom, smack, boom, boom, smack. So you can do that, that's fun. I mean, I like to reverse the role though. What I do is I say I'm gonna sing something or say something verbally, rhythmically, and then see if the student can interpret what I said around the drums. So I might go boom, bakakakum, to see if they can go boom, dukakakum, and maybe the gak would be the snare, so it gets them sort of listening to the rhythm, but also I'm trying to use, you know, a phonetic proper word for the snare, gak, right? Boom, bukakakum. And you see them going, da, ka, 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 ka. It's like, no, no, right rhythm, but I want to see if you can try to get the sound. And it's fun because then they do that to me and we go back and forth and this could last a half hour. And it's always so much fun. So it definitely, the Ernie and Bert game is a huge one that you definitely have to try with your students. Another great drumming game for beginners, or even for some of your more advanced players, is called What Drum or Cymbal Did I Just Hit? So what happens there is I make them look away, they gotta close their eyes. I might, first of all, introduce the sounds of the drums just so it sort of refreshes in their head. I might hit each drum, each cymbal, and then I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna hit a drum, and you tell me which one I hit. Hit it, and they go, tom tom. I'm like, well, which one? Hit it again, hit it, small tom. Good. So not only is this a game that's kind of fun to play, it's also working on their ear training. They don't realize that. I tell them this afterwards, okay? So then I might go, okay, let's try this one. And I might go, hi-hat, snare drum, floor tom. And they're gonna go, hi-hat, snare drum, bass drum? No, no, do it again. Hi-hat, snare drum, floor tom. They'll get that. Then you let them try that with you. You close your eyes. And of course, they're gonna try to stump you. They're gonna play some crazy thing. And you go, okay, wait, make it simple. I gotta hear what you're doing. As it advances, say it gets a little bit easy for them. Try doing things like two sounds at once. That's where it gets trickier. If you play the snare drum and the small tom at the same time, there's two different tones that are overlapping. And they have to go, oh, snare drum and mid tom? No, no, hit it again. And you get them to focus on the pitches of the toms. So after that's all said and done, you know, I say, isn't that cool? Because now you're hearing drums, but also you're really working on the ear training to really listen to pitch. So things like that, like I might even get them to hear the cymbals and with the different pitches, I'll say, so this cymbal sounds like this, this one sounds like that. Then I'll say, which crash cymbal did I hit? And they're like, the one on your left, yeah, because you're hearing that sound. So really fun game to get them, you know, just excited about the sounds of the drums, but also to secretly work on their ear training. For students that have been playing a little bit longer, a game that I like to play with them is called Name That Tune. And no, there's no music involved, it's just drum parts from songs. So what I like to do is I might play a song drum part, such as maybe Tom Sawyer, or Back in Black, or parts from Master of Puppets. Make sure it's songs they know. So if you're playing something that's not within their genre or music they don't listen to, it might be more challenging. But it could be from a song that we played together in lessons or music they listen to on their own. But the fun thing is, you'll be amazed at how it starts to go back and forth because then they're gonna go, hey, I got one, I got one. And then I gotta hopefully know the tune they're demonstrating. So that's a really fun game called Name That Tune. Go back and forth. My Sharona, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. There's so many great ways to actually you know, play a groove that uh, see if they know the song, okay? Now the second one is Name That Groove. Okay, now Name That Groove is not a song. It's an actual groove, like a halftime shuffle, or a merengue, or a bossa nova, 
or it could be, you know, any kind of Latin stuff, Bolero, 3-4 Swing, just to see if they've obtained that information you taught them when you did talk about that style. And I, especially if I play a merengue, I, and when I teach the students a merengue, they love it because it's such a fun beat to play. And they're gonna go, oh, 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 yeah, that's, ah, you showed me that one. Um, ah, what's that? Oh, uh, it's got a weird name, like a, like a pie or something. Like, no, it's not meringue, it's merengue, you know? So it refreshes their memory on stuff they did. But it also sort of recaps the stuff we did, and then they can start practicing st the stuff again. And I'll say, hey, play me a merengue and it refreshes their memory. So there's always reason for these games, is I wanna make sure that they remember the stuff that we did as well. So that's a huge one. The last game that I play in that category is called Name That Fill, okay? Now, Name That Fill, you have to make sure they know songs with big, famous drum fills. Um, one that I use is one called Phil's Fill. It's uh, from Phil Collins' In the Air Tonight, you know. Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. And 99% of the time, the student gets that one. Now, it might be a little bit trickier if you're picking fills from, say, a Tool song or a Rush song, things like that. But once again, you gotta make sure that the student knows the song that you're playing the fill from. What I've noticed with this game is if they don't quite know the fill per se, they know where it's from, they're gonna be like, hey, that's a cool fill, can you teach me that? And I'll say, sure, and here's how we can take this famous drum fill and use it into everyday playing. So once again, it expands my teaching vocabulary even more. Most drum students should have some sort of a rudiment poster or some sort of a page that you've given them displaying all 40 drum rudiments. I have one on the wall in my studio, and one thing I like to play is called the rudiment poster game. So what I do is I say, hey guys, we're gonna play something today called the rudiment poster game, and they're like, what? I say, okay, see the rudiment poster on the wall? And they're like, yep, so they stare at it. I said, just look at it for a minute. I said, do me a favor, study all the names for a second. Take your time, take two minutes tops. So you can see them kind of looking. I said, okay, now look at me. And I'll say, name them, and I have a piece of paper, and a pen, I'll say, start, start naming the ones that you, that you saw in there. Oh, uh, Flam, Single Stroke Roll, Pat -a -fla -fla, Triple Rat -a And it's amazing, because sometimes they're going, man, I, gee, I wish I would have known that I had to study this. I didn't know what I was looking at. So then I say, do me a favor, look again, but you only got 30 seconds. And they're now they're studying it real quickly, like, oh, I gotta know the names, I gotta know the names. So, okay, you know, so you got five last time, how many you got this time? And you'd be amazed, like 25, you know, they might name some that are wrong. But I'll say this is a big part of how I want to start teaching you guys rudiments, some of the more intermediate and advanced players, is get to know the names of them first. Once you know the names, we can start applying the sticking to them, okay? So another rudiment poster game that I like to play is I say, okay, once you get to know the names of the rudiments, I want you to start naming them in order. From number one down to number 40. And I've had a couple of students succeed at this. Now, I gotta be honest, I can't do that. <laughs> I think I get a few of them mixed up, but I mean, generally, I can get through the most. I think I'd probably get like a 95% on the test, but I've had a few students get 100%. It shocks me at how much they study this thing. But once again, it's really engulfing their mind into you know, the world of drum rudiments. And at that point, maybe down the road, what I'll say is, hey, remember that rudiment poster game we played there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you name them? Oh, that's easy. Okay, now I'm gonna teach you maybe 10 today. I'm like, oh, cool. So it opens up a whole brand new door for the world of rudiment learning. Learning the language of music is very important. So from time to time, we have to play a little more serious games. I have a game I like to call, you know, the note value or rudiment game. And what that is, is I have flashcards, okay? And the flashcards will have pictures of a quarter note, a half note, uh, the sticking of a paradiddle, a chicken, a flam. Yeah, I said chicken. You're probably thinking, chicken? This is fun because it totally takes the seriousness out of it. Like I'll be holding up these flashcards, you know, and they go, oh, that's a, that's a whole note. That's a paradiddle sticking. What the? There's a picture of a chicken. And they're like, I'm like, yeah, it's chicken. And, like, what? and some people find it really funny and some people go, what the heck? But it takes the seriousness out of it. So now it makes it fun. And all of a sudden, and every now and then there'll be something else, some random picture of a tricycle. I picked these out of my kids' flashcards from their school. And uh, it's, it's just a lot of fun to get them realizing that because when they start to memorize how music looks or how stickings of certain rudiments look, it's here.
right? And they can see it and go, oh, yeah, I know that. And then if they don't, say they are unfamiliar with something, like hold up a picture of a 30 second note rest, they go, oh, so what's that? And every now and then I will hold up something I know they don't know, okay? So if it's something they know and they don't remember it, I have to refresh. So we gotta kinda go back a little bit. So in, in the next lesson or the lesson on that day, we need to rediscuss eighth note and, and the values. Or if it's a 30 second note rest and they go, oh, I've never seen that before. Oh, this is something new we're gonna talk about at the end of the lesson or maybe next week. So you can see that my games always turn into something that's gonna evolve into a lesson at some point. And there's always a learning process. It's not just a big half hour waste of time. But uh, I've always got such great feedback from playing these games with the student. I've had students even come in and say, hey, can we play a game today? And I'll say, well, I had something else in mind, but if we have time at the end of the lesson, maybe for the last five or 10 minutes, we'll throw in a game. And it's such a great part of uh, anybody's learning regardless of age or level. So be sure to try out these games. This wraps up the series and all the topics we discussed. I sure hope you guys learned a lot and had a lot of fun. I know I sure did. And I hope to see you all real soon. Once again, my name is Mike Michalko. Good luck to you and take care everybody.